Hello humans and other species, I'm Batsy, and welcome to Skull Island. A collaborative series where I build your suggestions and ideas, with the goal of working together to achieve the coolest face ever. In previous episodes, we made a functional fishing boat, capable of sailing around the island. And of course, it's also a fishing farm. We also made this fantastic quarry that uses mechanical bearings for decorative contraptions with a cobble generator at the core of it. More recently, we made a really cool radio station with an antenna that spins around, with the most intricate texturing and details on the island so far, and a nice interior that resembles a recording studio. For today's episode, and as voted for you all, we will be making a brewing station. I'm interpreting it as a setup to brew all the potions in the game. But before we jump into it, I have changed a few things between episodes. I've changed this roof for a more metallic look. I think it was looking fine before. The spruce trapdoors and slabs were a good fit for the campfires, but it just felt like too much wood to me. This part, for example. I'm always making sure that there are a couple of types of wood, so it doesn't become monochrome. This side, maybe it's a bit more extreme. There are a couple of colors to avoid the textures from blending together, but it does still feel like a pile of wood in a sense. We have these crates, for example. If it wasn't for the veggies, it would look like a wood mess. Even with the different colors of wood, it would blend too much together. What I mean to say is that even if by texture or color things don't blend per se, because everything is wood, it just feels like a generic pile of wooden supplies. The small details seem to lose their identity in a sense. But with those colorful blocks around, it seems to prevent that issue in my head. I don't know if I'm making a lot of sense. The short reasoning is that too much wood doesn't look so good, so we made a metal roof. The other change I made is based on a suggestion from one of my supporters. They mentioned that this station should be a broadcast station and the place from where I upload my videos. I thought that was a brilliant idea, so I did some changes on the inside. I basically repurposed the recording room for a more generic office room with a computer to work on. There's a chair where we can chill or maybe think about content ideas and get our torsos stuck through the chair. And we have Mr. Octopus over here for not much reason other than it looks quite cute so I decided to make one of these. And obviously, the most important part which is the computer. We have the display, the keyboard and mouse, pretty much all we need. I mean, sure, you need to squint a bit to see it, but it kinda does the trick I would say. I use some armor stands, which I think it's the first time I actually make use of those for decorations. I sealed those so it won't let me access them again. Hold on, I'm going to bring a new one to show you how it works. Alright, I made myself a new armor stand. We have this mod that is basically like the armor stand data pack, but it just does it all with an interface instead. There are tons of options and small adjustments depending on what you're looking to achieve. You can make it small if you need that, or you can make it invisible, which is what I did for the keyboard and mouse. The gravity is kind of useful too. It basically lets us change the Y position without the armor stand falling back down into the ground, so you can do some stuff with that. There's a ton of options to be honest, and I haven't really explored even a 1% of it. Oh, almost forgot the most important one. You can obviously equip the armor stand with anything you want. That's how I added the pulse extenders and stuff on the table. There are several stands holding things in there. The only thing I don't like, and the reason why I couldn't access it before, is that there is an option to seal the armor stand, but only when you are in creative mode. See, there it is. It reads cool because it says that it cannot be broken, so that seems useful once you are done with it. But yeah, as the option says, it cannot be accessed in survival mode. It's kind of a bummer really, I wish we could at least get the option to make it indestructible or something. Maybe with a tool like the wrench, so it only opens the menu with the right tool. That way you wouldn't need to go to creative mode. That would be kinda useful. But anyway, this is my new computer. I will be working on my videos in this new studio from now on. Kinda silly that I need to go to creative mode again to remove my own mess. But anyway, I think that's all I did between episodes. Small details, but good changes all around. Now, while my brain is in flames and smoking, we gotta find out how to make a brewing setup for the potions with Create. I do have some ideas in mind, so I'm hoping it's not going to be too complicated. Let's move to Creative and see what we can do. 
All right, so here is the idea I have in mind. We have a basin with a mixer on it. That should brew some potions, or at least one step of the potions. We add a bunch of pipes like so. Then we get a row of tanks for storage. And we connect them with those smart pipes where we can add some filters to them. I'm not sure if connecting the tanks directly, or doing some more redstone in between. I'm sure it will be fine for now. So in my head, this should allow us to store each of the fluids separately. So now we can extract them from the other side, and we add these valves that never mind. Are these just vertical? Looks like it. Okay, okay, that's fine. We add more tanks to it. Now we put back the pumps. And then all of the pipes get mixed, obviously. We need some casings. So we add the valve. No, that's horizontal. So we add the valve. That's horizontal again. Here we go. It had to be placed against something. Now we just block the pipe and we go again. Another pipe. Another valve. And we block the pipe again. Okay, that's all of them. Now we connect the outputs together, and we add it to a basin, I imagine. Yeah, I think this should do. Let's take a look at a potion. How does this get done? Uh, of course, it's using a spout. All right, we can fix that. Okay, so now we have a spout. What else do we need for this? So I have been checking, and of course, we need the awkward potion first. After that is just random ingredients for the actual potions. Right, I kind of forgot that part. So we need another segment here that has water, awkward potions, and mundane potions. Okay, I think something like this should do. We can brew in here any of the three bases for the potions or, well, I guess the water just moves forward. But regardless, that should store them all independently. Then we can just come to this side and select which base we want for the potion which I guess the potion also needs an item input, of course. But that should be as easy as using a hopper with a barrel. We don't really need that many materials to make a few potions. So once we brew the potion we want to make, it should in theory only go through its own filter and that should store them independently. Yeah, I think this should work. So now the deal is that potions can be upgraded too and we 100% want to upgrade the potions. Here is what I'm thinking. We don't want to store every upgrade option, because then we multiply what we have by 4, and that's a lot of tanks. So we upgrade them after the storage. I think that will be the answer. So, something like this, maybe. Wait, we can upgrade it twice. Now yes, something like this. We have a couple of basins. Each one to make one of the upgrades we're looking for. And the spout to fill up the bottles. Yeah, that seems like a plan to me. I mean, sure, we need to figure out some stuff and polish this design further, but I think this is a solid idea. For example, we could have a pipe to bypass the upgrades in case we want the potion directly. And then we need an infinite water source connected somewhere too. And maybe a system to flush the pipes in case some fluids get left there. That would instantly clog the system. I tell you what, I'm going to figure out those things. Give me a couple of hours, and I'm going to fully polish this design. I will bring you all back when this is properly done. A few hours later. And sure enough, it barely took me a couple of hours to finish this off. The concept is the same. I just polish the details. Like, for example, having enough tanks for each one of the vanilla potion effects. And while I was building all of this, it came to mind that many times in the SMP series, I make some neat farms and stuff. But usually, it will take an entire new video to make a proper guide for it, so I tend to not make schematics with those. That gave me the idea that I'm just going to upload the schematic to my coffee page. And from now on, I will be uploading there any random farm I make that doesn't have a video guide or anything. I'm still going to make tutorials and schematics of farms. This is just going to be for the random farms that I generally don't share. So if you're interested in this particular setup or other random farms that I have been doing over the months, all of these will be available to any supporter on my coffee page. That counts for either subscriptions or one-time supporters. Now, what have we done with all this copper? Well, mostly organize things up really. The idea is to make some sort of witch hut or something. Or even if it's not a witch hut, I wanted to place this in this swampy area. The problem is that this is really small. So I thought, maybe I can shove most of it underground and leave the few basins at the top in the actual building. 
These basins might still be too far apart for the build, but I didn't want it to share a weird schematic either. I think the current setup is decent for anyone that wants to use it. It just means that I might have to adjust few things further once we get to building the final hut. So, it starts the same way as before. We have the three base fluids, those being the water, the awkward, and mundane. Technically there are more, but stuff like lingering and splash can be added at the end, and I don't want to overcomplicate things too much. All of this will be based on having water in the first place. So, stuck behind this basin, there is a small infinite water source. That's constantly filling up the basin with water, and if the water tank was missing some, it would also fill that too through the basin. What I learned is that handling fluids is really easy with the Create mod. The pipes don't store any of the actual fluids. Right now, even though the basin is filled with a mixture of fluids, none of them are actually in the following pipes. Only if one of the tanks starts to go down, then their respective fluid will start to flow in. That's important, because we're never going to have the problem of one fluid being stuck in the pipe, and thus, not allowing any other fluid to go through. I hope it's making sense so far, but all you really need to know is that we will always have the water. And we can either throw another wart or glistering melon to make the other two, without caring about the system ever breaking. Said wart or melons will obviously go to the barrel at the side of it. We can also see a blaze burner underneath, because brewing potions with create requires heat. Which I guess it's the equivalent of blaze powder. Once that step is done, we can move to the next basin, where we also have a barrel to feed the items for the potions. Here is where we are going to brew the first step of the potions. For example, the basic water breathing. With no duration upgrade, no splash potion, or anything of that. All we need to do is select which one of the base fluids we need for said potion. Which is basically turning the valve once so the pipe is open. That will fill up the basin with the selected fluid. Now we can fill the barrel with the item we want to brew with. And to finish it off, we use any fuel we have for the blaze. From here it's just a matter of waiting for the mixer to be done. That should fill up the respective tank with the potion we wanted to brew. In our case, it's filling the water breathing. That's all thanks to the ton of filters we have at the back. I'm going to explain how exactly those filters work in a moment. For now we just need to know that every single potion we brew will get stored in those tanks. One for each one of the vanilla potion effects. At least the ones that can be brewed, I ignored the luck potion. And just like we did before, here we can select with which fluid we want to make potions with. And by potions I mean to actually fill up water bottles so we can consume those potions. Just remember, always turn off the valves when you are done. From the potions and from the base fluids too. Otherwise things get more messy. Now for the final section. Here we have the exact same thing as before, a fluid input with an item input. This section is meant to upgrade potions. Things like adding glowstone to upgrade the tier of the potion, or maybe adding redstone to increase its duration. I added two of them because that's usually what I use it the most. I honestly have never used lingering potions, which I believe is the only way to upgrade a potion three times. I'm not a potion expert, but I feel like two is more than enough, even though we are already in high levels of overkill with this setup. Sadly, this is the annoying part of the setup, because the smart fluid it's kinda smart, but also a little bit dumb. If we add a random potion, let's add water breathing for example. We want to upgrade from 3 minutes of water breathing to 8 minutes, which will require redstone. We can add the potion that lasts 8 minutes into the filter. And yes, the water breathing that lasts only 3 minutes won't go through, which is fantastic. I will be adding splash water breathing just to block the last pipe, so we can see this more clearly. Now if we add some redstone to it, we can see how the 8 minute water breathing is moving forward to the next basin. And if we add gunpowder into this one, then we get the final product in the spout above. All of this is fantastic. Easy to use, and it's really hard to break. There is a small caveat that I'm sure many of you are thinking right now. Well, what happens if we don't have the potion to use for the filter? Can't we just use a normal filter and add the potion through the JEI mod or something? And sadly, the answer is no. Either the smart pipe is not so smart and doesn't know how to read those filters, or I'm not so smart because I have no idea how to make it work with filters. 
I tried with keeping the NBT data and all of that, but no chance, I wasn't able to figure it out. It's not the end of the world anyway, it just means that we should always leave at least one potion of each type around so we can use it as filter. This setup is massively overkill anyway, and even more so when people never use potions. So a couple of extra potions just for the filters seems in line with the rest of the silliness that we are doing. That was quite a long explanation of things, but this is more or less the basics of how it works. There are some details like the metal brackets or converting some pipes to glass so they don't mix together. And a few other things that I have done just for personal preference. Even though we did it in a weird way, which is mostly my fault of course, this is still fairly simple stuff. And as a reminder, by the time this video is uploaded, there should be the schematic on my coffee page. I won't be making a video guide from it, at least not from this current setup, but it's there if you want to use it at your own risk. Now what we need to do is move this setup into the server and somehow build a cool little witch hut on top of it. So Editor Batsy, cue the time lapse. As I finished working on that little montage, I realized that I forget to add a cauldron. I know, shame on me. We made an entire brewing setup, a whole witch town to hide it, and I forget the most obvious thing of it all, the simple cauldron. But it's here, and now the town really feels complete. All right, before we check those little huts, let's take one last quick look at the brewing setup. In the end, I felt like I would have to build a massive hut to hide all of the basins, so I decided to divide it in three smaller huts. The first one has the base fluids, which I had to relocate slightly so it wasn't so close to the rest of them. This one also has a ladder to access the basement, so we can tweak around the setup depending on what we are brewing. The decorations here aren't particularly amazing. I added some dark messy floor to combine it with the mud ceiling, which I think it's a cool touch. Then I added some spruce on the walls to contrast it with the rest, and a few dark oak details to add some texture. Very simple interior, but it looks decent, and that's all that matters. The second hut has the basic potions, and I made sure to add some barrels and all of them to store the fuel for the blazes, or in case we want to store some brewing materials. As for the last one, I had to leave this one open. It's slightly too big, and you can see how close to the second hut this is. In the end, I actually love how this one looks. You might have noticed during the time lapse that I was trying to make some sort of gothic style roof. But then I realized I'm not B-dubs, and it was looking ridiculous. 
So I had the idea of doing the cute little hats as the other two roofs, but making it double instead. Sure, there are a few touches here and there that could be greatly improved, but I'm actually super happy with these roofs. I was looking for inspiration, and I saw a few people building witch hats for roofs, and I thought that was a really cute idea. So I tried to spice it up a little bit and make each one with a different color, just so it doesn't blend with one another too much. Overall, I'm pretty happy with all of the colors. I think the town itself is looking fantastic. The last part is the transition with the rest of the island, and here I went for a more weird approach. I was thinking in my head. People usually don't like witches all that much, and witches don't like humans a whole lot either. So it makes sort of sense that there is not a clear path on how to traverse this little forest. Which I guess it doesn't look a whole lot like a forest. I just tried to add enough green to sort of wall off the area. And I will be completely honest with you all, I kind of hate it. I don't hate the idea, I just hate how bad I am at doing trees and greenery in general. So much so that I honestly left it halfway there. I think this looks good enough for now, I don't want to get frustrated building something that I have no clue how to do it. This section is the only one that I think it looks a bit better. I was testing at the very end with replacing the mangrove roots with fences. I don't like how massive the mangrove roots look for such a tiny, tiny tree. In my mind, it makes no sense for the trunks to be that thick. I think this section looks substantially better, and I might revisit this idea in the future to properly finish this little witch town. But for now, this will have to be it for this episode. We ended up building a lot today, and I hope that everyone had a blast with the process. As usual, do make sure to vote in the comments on what you would like to see next, and maybe give some suggestions to add to the list of options. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.